Ladies and gentlemen, another top, top day of news flying around left, right and center. Kante is about to make huge, huge money, man. Uh, you best believe he's probably leaving. Todd Bowley is also in Saudi Arabia, potentially looking for a minority stake there. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. There's a whole heap of news about Kai Havertz. There's a lot popping off in regards to Kai Cedar and Lewa Cole. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. This is the latest that's popping off at the moment. Look, I think Angelo Kante will move on. Where? Our midfield's absolutely going to get decimated. Angelo Kante moving on. Mason Mount most likely moving on. Kovacic most likely moving on. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, it's up in the air at the moment, but I'm pretty certain he'll move on. <laughs> we we need some midfielders, man. We need some midfielders big time. Saudi um, emissaries are in London to present an official proposal to Kante. Salary bid could reach 100 million euros. This is from Fabrizio Romano. Huge, huge offer from Saudi Arabia. Saudis, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, I will be there. Inshallah, I will be there in Saudi Arabia next season. Um, hopefully, Yunus and Matisse and Baba can all join me as well. Definitely take my family. They are doing a madness over there. Karim Benzema has been already... Um, presented by Al Itihad and it looks like Kante is potentially going there as well. It all started from Cristiano Ronaldo, the pioneer, and everyone is now moving into that particular league. All eyes on that league. It's going to be a sensational league, no doubt about that. I'll be watching a lot of that league next season. Might even throw in some watch-alongs. There is a serious possibility Kante could leave Chelsea. Chelsea had structured a contract offer that would have rewarded him heavily for playing time. Chelsea had structured a contract offer that would have rewarded him heavily for playing time. So based on how much he plays, that's how much he's going to earn. But Saudi reps have presented him offer worth up to 86 million. This is from Matt Law. And apparently Matt Law has... Um, uh, I think it might have been another tweet that um, PYS uh, Matt Law apparently retweeted. Anyway, losing Kante would be another blow to Pochettino, who had been attracted to the idea of working with him. Look, with all due respect, and look, Fabrizio Romano is in the house in PYS's comments. Matisse as well. Can't complain with that. He doesn't play often enough to offer any other type of deal. If he goes, he leaves a legend to get that bag for more minis. Uh, look, ladies and gentlemen, um, with all due respect for Pochettino wanting to collaborate with Angelo Kante, there is massive concerns about his injury. He got injured again off the back of being injured for so long. He just got injured again and he's back. So there is a lot of doubt on Angelo Kante. And if there is an offer, it looks like there is. I'll show you the next tweet. There is an offer from Saudi Arabia and it's a huge offer. Kante should be taking the $86 million. I think it's over a couple of seasons as well. That's huge. That's a mad payday. And for Kante's lifestyle, it works out perfectly. Muslim background in Saudi Arabia, he'll love it. It'll be sensational for him. And hopefully he can stay fit and play some, you know, get some games over there. It would be sad to see him being, you know, injured in Saudi League after getting that level of bag as well. Breaking, ladies and gentlemen, this just dropped probably about a few hours back, um, but this is the latest on Angola Kante. More after exclusive news, Al Itihad delegation has presented the official bid to Angola Kante and his camp, Saudi Arabia. Al Itihad are confident to get the green light soon. Details 100 million euros, inclusive of image rights, commercial deals, and a creative investment portfolio. This is what Saudis are doing. Not only the salary, image rights, commercial deals, investment portfolio. I think for Benzema, there was like life investments as well. Like they are setting up the players for good. It is not just a retirement. It is it is, it is, is an unbelievable scenario. It really is. It's probably setting up their generations, you know, not just a player, but their entire generation from here on in. So look, I completely believe Angelo Kante is moving on. He is moving on. Exciting for, obviously, Saudi League. Exciting for the player. What does it mean for us? What does it mean for us? Ladies and gentlemen, 
we need midfielders. And I know we have Andre Santos, we've got Chasura Kasedi, we've got Chukomeka, and that's fine. I think potentially one of them might be gone on a loan. I can't imagine how all three stays with us. We need midfielders. We failed to get Ogate. You know, now the focus seems to be on Caicedo, and I'm not I'm not gonna build myself up for Caicedo um, because this is probably even more difficult than Ugarte. And if we get him, fantastic. Look, we should be looking at players like Joao Palinha of Fulham and, and other options as well. So, look, I, don't, I just don't want to have this long, stretched out saga with Caicedo, who Brighton seemed to have this upper hand on us as well with Colwell. Brighton moving mad. But Brighton acting like a big club, and they're treating us very disrespectfully. Um, you know, they do have an upper hand. Um, and I'm not really sure whether it's a straight cut situation. Like, we want Kaisido. Let how much do you want? Here's the money. Let's take him. No, there are actually there are other suitors as well that want Kaisido. But yeah, we need midfielders, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know how you feel about Angola Kante moving to Saudi Arabia. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys will appreciate the fact that he will finish up as a legend at Chelsea Football Club. It will be sad that we didn't get him a proper send-off, but look, for the player's sake, I think it's an exciting move, and for Saudi Arabian League, it is perfect as well. Um, of course, we need midfielders. Let me know in the comment section. Brighton is said to demand significantly more than £70 million for Moses Caicedo. Chelsea could improve their chances by including Colwell. As I've said in recent times, I'm worried about the Colwell situation. Me, personally, I would never let go of Colwell. Never. But I can't see how this deal happens without us giving Colwell to them. I really cannot see. Because Brighton, they won Colwell. They know exactly what type of a player they got. And they know they are about to lose Caicedo. But they're also aware that Chelsea aren't the only suitors. Man United's in the mix. Arsenal's name was there in January. And the player wanted Arsenal as well. So... As I said, this is going to be difficult. There we go. Retweeted by Matt Law. This particular news was retweeted by Matt Law. Um, some are even saying he's going to be in excess of 80 million. So this is the thing. A lot of a lot of Chelsea fans are thinking, oh, you know, just cough up the money and just do it. Look, that's a lot of money we're talking about. We need to have a lot of ad goings. We need to balance the books. And I'm pretty sure we'll probably have the money. It's it's never been that we don't have the money. We do. It's just the financial fair play. My biggest concerns are, one, I think Brighton wants Levi Colwell, so we may have to part ways with him. And two, what level of wages are we going to offer Kaiseda? A lot of people are like, oh, no, you know, he's not on big wages in Brighton. That don't mean nothing. Just because he's not on big wages at the moment, that doesn't mean this player doesn't know his value. This player very well knows he's one of the best midfielders in the Premier League. As I said, Man United's after him. Man United will give him a very, very lucrative offer. Can we match that? Can we match that? We've already showcased where our wage policy is in regards to Garta, and that's fine. That's fine. I think I think it's justified. We shouldn't be just splashing money, but what are we actually thinking about paying someone like Caicedo? Because... You best believe. I don't think something around 150k per week is going to cut it. It's going to have to be as close to 200, maybe 180k might do the trick if we can offer that. With all the outgoings, hopefully we should be able to offer that. But let's see. Let's see. As I said, the only upper hand we have in this deal against opposition clubs, if they are interested in Kaisido, which they are, is that we hold the Colwell card. If we can negotiate with them with Colwell, then I think this happens. If we don't want to sell Colwell, I think we need to look at alternatives. That's how I see it. I know you could see it otherwise, and let me know in the comment section as well. But that's the only way I see it. Exclusive. Brighton are now preparing a new record bid for Lewa Colwell, close to $40 million to be submitted soon. Chelsea turned down 30 million bid last week. Chelsea always had the same position. Colwell is part of the long-term project. No intention to sell, which is fantastic. I think Pochettino wants this particular player as well, which is great news. Um, but we do need to structure a plan. We do need to structure a a vision for Colwell because we still have Koulibaly. We still have Badishil. Yes, his Badishil is injured for a little while, but Badishil is touted to come back before the new season starts. So there's concerns there. We've got too many left-sided 
defenders, we have to make way for someone like Lee Wakowal. He, For me, he starts. But is he going to start? There's no way he's going to come to Chelsea Football Club and be benched. And we have to also understand, the way Brighton's coming so hard on this particular deal, you have to think, Lee Wakowal must have given the green light somewhere. Because if Lee Wakowal straight up told Brighton, look, I'm not interested, I'm going back to Chelsea Football Club. I believe in Chelsea Project. I believe I can make it there. Then Brighton would not be wasting time like this. This is this is a waste of time. But the fact that they are coming back with 40 million bid, this is a record bid for Brighton. You have to understand, this club is a selling club. They don't go out there and just purchase huge, you know, sum of money for a particular player. So this has to be an indication from Lee Wakowa that hey. I'm keen. Push. Push Chelsea. And as I said, Brighton, no, we won Kaisido. So let me know your thoughts in regards to <sighs> Lee Wakowa, ladies and gentlemen. Are you willing to lose Lee Wakowa to get Kaisido? Or are you willing to just keep Lee Wakowa and forget Kaisido and move on to the next, next um, target? Or are you in the belief that we can potentially keep both? Let me know. Let me know. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know where this came from. Um, I don't know too much about this player, but I've heard a lot of stuff on social media. Many fans are gassed about him. I think he's a player from Celta Vigo. Chelsea entered the race to sign Gabri Viga. I've recently seen Liverpool being linked with him. A lot of fans rate this guy, but I've, I've, I don't know much about him. I've not, as I said, I've not watched him. I don't know. Um, what he does and whatnot, but I think CFC Central over here put up a nice little tweet, which we'll get to. Breaking, Maurizio Pochettino wants Gabri Viga, who has 34.4 million release clause. Chelsea are prepared to push hard. This is from Jacob Steinberg. Um, I have to say, recently, Jacob Steinberg has been coming out with some crazy, crazy stuff. But look, he works for The Guardian. You have to take it somewhat seriously. Gabri Viga has emerged as one of the best young midfielders in Europe. Chelsea face competition now from Liverpool and Barca. Look, it makes me think the recent rumours about Valverde from Real Madrid. Maybe there might have been some truth around that because a lot of people are saying he's sort of, he's, he's a number eight. He's a similar type of a player to Valverde. Um, you know, um, very good on the ball. He's got immense technical ability. Um, I want to showcase to you what CFC um, Central said about this. Gabri Viga ranked third for one touch passes in La Liga 2021-2023. So um a few people are saying poten potentially mount replacement. Info on Vega, not sure one uh, not sure on the fit for us. This is what CFC Central had to say, ladies and gentlemen. As I said, I've not watched these players. So I don't know too much about it. Plays eight for Celta. Very good ball carrier, nice press resistance as well. Needs to refine his final ball plus decisions, but exciting. Don't know why Poch wants him, considering A, we are likely to play a 4-2-3-1. B, if not, we already have talented eights in Kani, Cassidy, and Santos. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave this one with you guys. Let me know, is this is this a player worth going after? I was under the impression we're going for, you know, players like, you know, Ugarte and, and Caicedo, that type of a profile, more sort of defensive midfielder Um who are very good on the ball as well. Of course, technical ability is there. But this guy is purely a number eight. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, like a Ruben Loftus-Cheek or Mason Mount kind of caliber. So let me know. I mean, is this is this what we are going for? Um, yeah, watch this space. I'm not... Jacob Steinberg, as I said, I don't know, some strange news in recent times. Breaking this one again from Jacob Steinberg, but this one you probably can believe. Uh, Kai Havertz tells Chelsea he wants to leave and have a new challenge. Now, there's, but there was some news that was floating around stating that this deal has collapsed with Real Madrid. Look, if it's not Real Madrid, find another suitor. I think Bayern Munich might be keen and whoever else, right? I personally get the feeling Havertz wants to leave. It's either he leaves or he signs a contract extension because he's only got two more years left. We're not going to enter this new season, you know, in a situation where the season finishes and Kai Havertz only has one more season left. And then we're in this conundrum again, the way we are with Mason Mount and many of the other players that we have. It's either now he signs a contract extension or we sell him. And personally, I would not get him to sign a contract extension because we've seen enough. We've seen enough. And I don't think the player wants to stick around at Chelsea Football Club anymore either. 
Chelsea won 75 million. This is from Jacob Steinberg. Look, that is definitely far-fetched. His stocks are not high. Yes, he's got some, you know, very, very good facets about him. No doubt about that. Young German international. Yes, loads of potential still. Two years left in his contract, 75 million. I think that's way far-fetched. If we can get somewhere around 60, 65, potentially around 60, I think we can do something. Fair to say Chelsea and Kai Havertz are on the same page. Club prepared to let him leave. While Havertz is open to trying new chapter elsewhere, Chelsea hope for more clubs to join the race in the next days after Real Madrid interest registered last week. So, look, I think Real Madrid's interest is still there. Real Madrid also are losing quite a lot of number of players. Um, yeah, I'd love to see other clubs coming to uh, coming to uh, this this particular you know, tug of war for Kai Havertz. It'd be it'd be fantastic. I think Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich is one. Thomas Tuchel did like Kai Havertz a lot. He used to play Kai Havertz up front as a, as a as a you know false nine or nine and a half that Thomas Tuchel used to call it. So let's see if Bayern Munich come into the race. It'd be interesting to see. What happens then with Real Madrid once another particular club comes into the frame? I can't see anyone else, to be honest. I can't see how this player goes to Serie A. And Serie A, simply, no clubs will be able to afford anything near to £60 million. So Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, PSG, I don't think so. I think they've got their eyes elsewhere. I can't see anywhere else, if I'm being absolutely honest. So let's see what happens with Kai Havertz. But as I said... I don't think he wants to stick around. And when a player doesn't want to stick around, let's move on. Let's move on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what is going on. There seems to be some Neymar news floating around again. I don't want to entertain this, but I still want to showcase the report to you guys. But I can't see how this happens, man. We we can't find the wages for Ogate. How are we going to find the wages for Neymar? Unless PSG sends him on a loan and predominantly pays major part of that wages. I can't see how we pay these wages, man, with financial fair play looming on top of our head as well. Would I like a player like Neymar? Oh, my days. Yes, sensational. Like, merchandise would sell. Stadiums would be full. But he's injury prone. He's another one of those players that barely play throughout the season. You come to the Premier League, he'll be targeted massively. He'll get ripped apart. He will absolutely get ripped apart. Would it be exciting if he's fit? Of course. No Champions League either with Chelsea Football Club. Why would Neymar want to come to a club that has no Champions League? He wants to showcase his talent at the highest level. Do you know what I mean? Um, there's rumours about Newcastle. There's rumours about Man United. I think those are probably more plausible destination as opposed to us sorry for posting that uh j felix diaz report without doing checks i should do better it might still be true alex bernardo has just posted an exclusive saying that chelsea have started talks with neymar with psg i'm not sure on the reliability so i will just probably retweet stuff that i'm not sure on so you can still see confirmed tier one sources only from now on so look i don't know man here's the neymar news so if you guys want to check that out um, exclusive from, I believe, probably uh, a Brazilian journalist. Let me have a look at that. Alex Bernard. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, looks like French, English, Portuguese. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I, I don't know, man. I can't take this seriously, to be honest. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, even our owner, Todd Bowley, is in Saudi Arabia. This is when I start thinking, you know how all of that rumor is about trying to get a minority stake at sporting? This is why. Why is he in Saudi Arabia? Why is his brother in Saudi Arabia? What's he doing there? Today we met the owner of Chelsea, Todd Bowley, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, specifically the capital Riyadh, and he assured us that the future of the club would be bright. Welcome to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> He's investing there, I'm sure. Minority stake. Minority stake in the Saudi league. You best believe. Look, he's a businessman. No problems. But this is why what I said about the Ogate situation, that it's not far-fetched for me. Because I know our owners are looking around for investments. And I wouldn't put it past them for trying to sneak in something within the Ogate deal to get a minority stake on sporting. And I believe... PSG got the smell of this particular news and threatened 
to to you know put up legal action because in all honesty as i've mentioned in my video yesterday you can hide a player cost when it's mixed in between you can separately do the transaction you know getting a minority stake on sporting getting them you know trying to buy ugate but when you mix all of these together yeah that ain't going down well and george mendez lots of people have been commenting you guys have been commenting that maybe george mendez wanted to be part of that you know minority stake purchase from chelsea so he can get some commission out of it and maybe he wasn't involved in all of this and he just snitched and told psg that hey look look what they're doing and maybe he's stopped this situation because <laughs> george mendez controls portugal so if you want to buy anything or anyone you better be going through george mendez he's the kingpin of portugal portugal and the portuguese league so look this is why this is why it makes me think we might have done something sneaky because you see our owners trying to move in in Saudi Arabia, which is, I'm quite excited about the Saudi league. I really am. Um, but there you have it. We can assure you things are happening. Um, this is coming from Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea Club Net. Seems like maybe a Saudi Arabian Chelsea related um, account. Todd Bowley with Prince Al Walid bin Talal and Fahad bin Nafel, uh, Al Hilal FC president. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Todd Bowley. He's loving life. He's loving life, ladies and gentlemen. Minority stake indeed. Um, yeah, look, I got no issues. This guy wants to be an investor uh, and he wants to have his hand and foot everywhere he goes. No problems. Just make sure you have Chelsea, you know. Concentrate a little bit on Chelsea as well. Make sure Chelsea are back to where we meant to be. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys have enjoyed everything we've talked about. And let me know in the comment section what you think about every uh, bit of news, especially the Angelo Kante, Liwa Kowal, and also Kaisido. Um, smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. I shall see you guys for a live tomorrow. Till then, see ya.